Hey everyone, today we'll take a look at Midjourney's new V6.1 model and how it compares to the 6.0 model, including things like SREF codes, model personalization, and conventional beauty bias. The new 6.1 model was set to default for all users, so if you don't want it to be your default model, you can always set a new default model in your settings. Okay, first let's start with image quality. The 6.1 update brings a boost to image quality with reduced pixel artifacts and enhanced textures. Eyes and skin have improved clarity and look more realistic in photographic images. You should also see better coherence and accuracy when it comes to things like bodies and hands. 6.1 also has a Q2 mode. Dash dash Q is the quality parameter. It's not a new parameter for Midjourney as it is available in some previous Midjourney models. By adding dash dash Q2 to your prompt, you can sometimes get more texture and details in your results, but at the cost of slightly reduced image coherence. V6.1 also comes with new 2X upscalers. And anytime that Midjourney comes out with a new upscaler, I always try to do a side-by-side -side comparison with Gigapixel by Topaz Labs. I tend to switch back and forth between using Midjourney's upscalers and running the images through Topaz. Sometimes I upscale in Midjourney and then I run that image through Topaz. It really just depends on the image and what I'm trying to use it for. But here's a comparison using a photographic style image. These are all 2X upscales of the image from the original image grid. All three upscalers did a decent job. Upscale Creative did a great job at fixing her eyelashes, and I also really like the hair texture here. But I think Topaz did a better overall job with her skin texture and the sharpness and clarity of her eyes. Topaz does have a free trial for their photo AI and video AI software, so if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link down below. Now, some of you have already noticed that V6.1 has a bit more of a conventional beauty bias than 6.0. People tend to have smoother skin and less imperfection. Midjourney incorporated user-generated data to boost image quality in 6.1. However, an unfortunate side effect was an even greater conventional beauty bias. This was brought up in a recent Midjourney office hours, and they did expect that this could happen in 6.1 and are working to correct it for V7. So if you wanna create images of normal, average, or more unique looking people and characters, you might find it easier to stick with 6.0 for now. Speaking of characters, you can use any of your previous character references with 6.1, or you can mix and match by creating new characters in 6.1 and then using them in 6.0. You might notice that conventional beauty bias creeping in just a little bit with 6.1. It kind of depends on the image that you use as a character reference, but generally 6.1 handles character reference just like 6.0. There hasn't been an update to the character reference model, so you should get similar results. Now, when 6.1 came out, my brain immediately went to style references and wondering how certain SREF codes would look in the new 6.1. Here's an example with an SREF code that I named Candy Cosmos. This one is included in a collection of illustration style SREF codes that I recently released. Overall, you can see that the images have the same style between versions, which they should because 6.0 and 6.1 are still working with the same style space. However, the 6.1 images look a little more simplistic and less detailed. I've noticed this trend with pretty much every SREF code that I've checked so far. You'll get the same style in 6.1, but perhaps with a little less detail and complexity. Bottom line is that you can still use the same SREF codes in 6.1, but expect there to be some differences. 6.1 is a new model after all. So there's two more things that I wanna cover before we get to the new model personalization system. The first is that text rendering accuracy should be improved in 6.1. I'll be honest, I don't work with text rendering in images too often, so I'm really curious to hear your experiences. Does it handle longer phrases with fewer mistakes? Is it better at handling more complicated phrases? Let me know down in the comments. And if you're familiar with Midjourney's tile parameter, which you can use to create seamless patterns, you'll know that upscaling images often breaks the seamless pattern and then the edges don't perfectly line up anymore. This is fixed in 6.1. Tile not only works better, but it works with the new upscalers. So you can create a higher resolution tile and it won't break the seamless pattern. Last but not least, let's talk about the new model personalization system in 6.1. The new model personalization should be more accurate and nuanced in interpreting your visual aesthetic preferences based on your image rankings. If you haven't tried model personalization yet, I highly recommend you try it out. Your model personalization code also now changes as you rank more images. You can see all of your model personalization codes by typing slash list personalized codes in Discord. You can still use your old personalization code in both 6.0 and 6.1, and you can use any of your new personalization codes in 6.0. You can combine personalization codes, but they all have to be from the same system. 
For example, you can't combine your old personalization code that came online in 6.0 with a new one that appeared after the 6.1 release. I'd encourage you to run some tests on 6.0 and 6.1 with your old and new personalization codes to see which combination you like best. I'm still on the fence on if I prefer my old or newest personalization code. I like them both and their differences are more apparent in some prompts than in others, so I think it just depends on what I'm prompting for at the time. Either way, I'm really enjoying having multiple personalization codes to experiment with. So overall, I have noticed improved quality and clarity in images created with 6.1, but I personally prefer the 6.0 aesthetic for its creativeness, detail, and diversity. I'm looking forward to some of that coming back when V7 is released. Let me know down in the comments what your experience with 6.1 has been so far. Also, I'll be releasing a new set of SREF codes soon, and the monthly prompt collection is about to go out for Patreon members. I'll leave a link on the screen here and down below for Patreon if that's something that you're interested in checking out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, all the things. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.